All right, happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. All right, let's give the choir another hand. Brothers and sisters, it is an honor and a blessing to be able to stand before you today on the Lord's Sabbath day. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, we're going to have to read another law, Exodus 20, 1 through 17. Brother, go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. All right, we're going to go to Ecclesiastes 12. We're going to read 13 through 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. All right, we're going to go to Revelations 22, and we're going to pick up 14 through 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. All right, brother, thank you for reading the law. All right. It is a blessing, brothers and sisters, because by him reading the law, we all have been warned today. Amen. Amen. Right. Brothers and sisters, the title of the lesson today is Spiritual Morale. And as we go through the scriptures today, brothers and sisters, we're going to look at and focus on that spiritual morale because in serving God, you have to become spiritual minded. And we got to be able to understand what their morale is. And morale is the principles of right and the wrong behavior or uphold or allow your character to be manifested in a godly way. So we're going to be able to put these two things together today because brothers and sisters to understand God's word we got to begin, brothers and sisters, to look at these things spiritually. Because whatever you do, brothers and sisters, you're doing it for a reason. And you got to have your spiritual eyes on to begin to see things, brothers and sisters, to understand why you doing what you're doing. Because some people, brothers and sisters, Israel just walk in the motion. You know? But we know everybody's going to be held accountable. But now let's start off in Romans 8, in Romans 8, because we're going to begin to put this spiritual and moral together because we got to be spiritual minded, but then we got to have a moral with it, brothers and sisters. Romans 8, and we're going to start off 
in verse 5. Brother, when you get there, go ahead. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Hold right there. Brother and sisters, right there, right off the bat. That's a nail, brother and sisters, to put on the wall for this lesson today. Because we're dealing with spiritual and we're dealing with the morale, we're going to put them together. But to get to that point, it said, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But go ahead. But they that are after the spirit, the spirit, the things of the spirit. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit, brothers and sisters. And we know the Lord said, the words that I speak unto you, they are what? Spirit and life and truth. The words they speak to you, they are life and they are peace. Now, let's go here. Now, move down to verse 6. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's right, brothers and sisters. For to be carnally minded is death. That means that you are searching and doing the things of the flesh. But to be spiritually minded, that means you're beginning to understand, you're beginning to grow. See, those things, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And our overall goal, brothers and sisters, is life and that peace is looking for what? The eternal life. Why are you doing these things? Why are you here on the Sabbath day? Why are you doing the dietary laws? Why are you keeping the feast days? Why are you beginning to understand not to covet? You know, those are things, brothers and sisters, begin to see things spiritually because then we'll understand, brothers and sisters, that we have a responsibility to do. Now, let's go here to Matthew 7. Let's go to Matthew 7. And we're going to expound on that just a little bit here. Matthew 7. And we're going to pick up verse 12. There's one verse there. Matthew 7. And verse 12. Bro, go ahead. What does it say? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would, would that men should do to you, go ahead. Do you even so to them? Ain't that something, brother and sister? So when you begin to look at how you treating somebody, turn around and say, Do you want to be treated like that? But look what it said at the end. Go ahead. For this is the law and the prophet. For this is the what? The law and the prophet. It's, it's the law and the prophets, brothers and sisters. That's begin to seeing these things spiritually to begin to get anger out of you, frustration out of you towards people and understand that, hey, I got to take the higher road. I'm going to have to one maybe have to apologize or ask the Lord for repentance because you begin to see these things, brothers and sisters, for this is the law and the prophet is commanded. Because if we want forgiveness, we got to be able to forgive our own brothers and sisters, right? Because everything we do, we always want to go to the Father and ask him for forgiveness, whatever we do. But when our brothers and sisters offend us, we don't want to hear. But we got to start thinking spiritually, brothers and sisters. Now, let's go to Galatians 5. Let's go to Galatians 5. Let's go to Galatians 5. And we're going to pick up verse 14. Galatians 5. And let's look at verse 14 because we just read that it was, it was the law and prophets, right? Now let's look at this here, Galatians 5. And let's pick up verse 14. What does it say? For all the law is fulfilled in one word. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Go ahead. Even in this. Go ahead. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Is the world doing this now, brothers and sisters? But well, even is Israel doing it now, brothers and sisters? It got to begin here. 
Now, go ahead. Pick up. Yeah, go ahead. 15, what it say? But if ye bite and devour one another. What happened? Take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. And that's how it is, brothers and sisters. You begin to consume one another. Anger and stuff begin to what? Fester and all that. Keep going. What it say? 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit. Walk in what? In the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Go ahead. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's becoming spiritual minded, brother and sister. Then you begin to what? Walk in the spirit. You're walking in the word because it's telling you what? Love thy neighbor as thyself. If you apply that, it's part of the law and the prophets. Walk in the spirit and you shall not what? Fulfill what? The lust of the flesh. To, because, brothers and sisters, to begin to be spiritual minded and have a spiritual morale, brothers and sisters, you got to begin to adhere to the word of God. Let's go to Romans 6. Romans 6. Romans 17. Verse 17. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going too fast today, ain't it, man? I got your back. Oh, uh, he got me, ain't it? Man. Boy, he got me, man. Praise the Lord. I got to slow down, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go ahead. Verse 17. For the flesh lusteth lust against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Go ahead. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Ain't that simple, brothers and sisters? They contrary to one another. You can't want to do the things of the flesh, but then I want to be spiritual. I want to be spiritual minded. Those two going to what? Contradict one another. You going to serve the Lord or you not? Now, now let's go to Romans 6. I like when he said that he got my back today. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't want to rush now. Let me slow down here. Yeah, Romans 6, and we're going to just pick up verse 12 here. Go ahead, bro, what does it say? Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. So when you look at this, brother, the city said, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. What is sin? It's the transgression of the law. And it's telling you, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Go ahead. That you should obey it in the lust thereof. Thereof. Because, brothers and sisters, when you begin to let sin reign in your mortal body, it's starting with your mind. That's that flesh. That flesh is always fighting against spirit. And if you allow that sin to reign in your mortal body, then you begin to obey what? The lust thereof. Because it all started in the mind. Now, let's go here to Matthew 5. Let's look at Matthew 5. Because we can't allow, brothers and sisters, this sin to reign in our mortal bodies, brothers and sisters. And why is that? We're going to look at this here. Let's look at Matthew 5, that, brothers and sisters, that we have to have to Continue to think spiritually and not physically. And why is that? Let's see what Matthew 5 say here. Let's start in verse 14. Verse 14. Go ahead. What does it say? Ye are the light of the world. You are the light of the world, brother and sister. Israel, we're supposed to be, but sometimes, brother and sister, it begin to look like it's a little shaky, ain't it? But, brother and sister, we... Are the teachers, brothers and sisters. I know it gets a little cloudy sometimes when you look at everything, but we do have a responsibility. We do have a duty. It says, you are the light of the world. Go ahead. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. That's right, brothers and sisters, because when you do what this Bible say, you're going to stand out in the world, ain't it? If you do what this book say, you're going to be like that city. Because everybody's going to be asking you, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Why are you say that? Because you're doing, thus said the Lord. It's going to put you up there. 
But as we get this knowledge and begin to grow spiritually, we got to look at the morale of it. Can't have knowledge, brothers and sisters, and be a fool. Got to be wise. Go ahead. Neither do a man light a candle and put it under a bushel. Go ahead. But on a candlestick and to give it light unto all that are in the house. That's right, brother. So we can't get the knowledge and, and go hide it. You got to be that light. Sometimes, brother, so you got to look at that light that you're supposed to be. You don't even have to open your mouth. Your behavior or your character will say a lot. The way you carry yourself. Go ahead. 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And, and why is that? Why, why the Lord say he said, let your light so, so shine before men. Why? It said that they may see your what? Good works, but why? And glorify your Father which is in heaven. It's all about glorifying the Father, brothers and sisters. What you do, you can have the Father can be glorified or you can shame, or, or you can shame him. It's about glorifying him by doing what the Lord say. So he's telling you, brothers and sisters here, let your light so shine. Because when it's shining before men, brothers and sisters, you're giving them an opportunity to come to you and you can what? Have that knowledge on your lips to what? Be able to save them. Be able to give them the knowledge that you have. Because somebody had to come to you with this truth, didn't they? Mark 7. Let's go to Mark 7. It's imperative, brothers and sisters, that we begin to grow spiritually because there's so much wickedness, brothers and sisters, out there that try to take you away from having that spiritual mindset. Let's look at Mark 7 here. And let's pick up verse 14 here. Verse 14, what does it say? And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. That's right. Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. Brothers and sisters, so many people are hearing this word, but they're not understanding. No, do you truly understand why you keeping the Sabbath day? Do you understand? You know to do by you understanding why you doing. Are you understanding why you paying your time? Do the Lord need your money? Or with understanding, brothers and sisters, it's about obedience. That's understanding. And so when you understand about the obedience of tithing, you're not going to get caught up in how the money is being handled. Because you're doing what the Lord said. You did your part. You can move on. Simple. What word? What Fifteen. Verb? Go ahead. Listen to this. Go ahead. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. Go ahead. But the things which come out of him, whose are they that defile the man? That's right. A lot of people want to go here for the dietary law, but we're going to see what he's talking about here because he said there is nothing from without man that entering into him can defile him. And let's see what he's talking about. To keep going. And listen to verse 16. What does it say? If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Let him hear. He got to be able to hear. Skip down to verse 20 here. Verse 20. Go ahead. And he said, That which cometh out of a man that defileth the man. Right there. We're going to listen to this here, brother. Says, and he said, That which comes out of a man that defile the man. Go ahead. For from, for from within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thought. Right there, brother. So that's where it began. Right there. For from within, out of the heart of men, right here, proceed evil thoughts. Because when you begin to go against the commandments of God, them evil thoughts. You're beginning to break the law. But that's where it began. And once that evil 
thoughts begin, then, then what? Adulteries, fornications, murderers, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. See that, brother? So when you see those things there, like that lasciviousness, that's me all manner of lust. Don't you see stuff now you fringe up on? But the Lord tell us there is nothing new under the sun. Verse 23, what does it say? All these evil things come from within and defile the man. All these evil things come from within and defile the man, brothers and sisters, is right here. That's why, brothers and sisters, we got to look at things and serve the Lord spiritually. Because we got to get away with our fleshly thinking. Because if you continue to deal fleshly, brothers and sisters, you're going to end up breaking the commandments of God. Now, let's move here right over back to, let's look at uh, Mark 1. Because it seems like the things that we got to deal with, brothers and sisters, on a daily basis, you know, the biggest war is with ourselves. The biggest job we have is keeping the commandment, keeping ourselves in line. We too busy worried about what somebody else doing and not even examining yourself. You know? Because the whole duty of man is keeping the commandments of God. And that's every day the Lord give you breath. Let's look at this in Mark 1 here. Dealing with, the, dealing with an unclean spirit here. You see how the Lord handled this here. Let's go to uh, Mark 1. We're going to pick up verse 14. What does it say? Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Go ahead. And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. That's it. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Go ahead. 16. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea where they were fishers. All right. Skip down to verse 21. 21. Go ahead. And they went into Capernaum, and straight away on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. That's right. That's what you do on the Sabbath day. He entered into the synagogue and taught. Verse 22. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Go ahead. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. That's right. And there was in their what? Synagogue. Not right off in the, in the street like we always want to point. Oh, man, look what they doing. But see, right here, it's telling you, it's saying there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. Go ahead. Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Are thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. So when you look at this, brother, like saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee? Brother, so you're dealing here with these fallen angels. Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Are thou come to what? Destroy us. And know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Even they know the Lord, brothers and sisters. They knew Jesus. Why we don't know him? Ain't that something, brothers and sisters? He, he said that art thou come to destroy us? Say they already know, brothers and sisters, this is a spiritual battle. I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Look at verse 25 and what happened. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. Go ahead. And when the unclean spirit that had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. That's right. It came out of him. But look at verse 27. I added that in there. Look at verse 27. What does it say? 
And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? But with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. So, brother, so when you look at them, you look at these unclean spirits or the fallen angels with authority. Can they do anything of their own? No. You just see here they did what? And they do what? Obey. Everything, brother and sister, got to, got to answer to someone. And we know that's the Father. The Father giving the word to Jesus. Jesus gave the word to the angel. The angel gave it to man. The protocol ain't broken. So ain't no fallen angel have their own domain or nothing, brother. So they had to obey too. Just wanted to put that in there. Let's go here to Jeremiah 17. Because we constantly dealing in battling, brothers and sisters, every day to keep ourselves in line with the commandments. Like some of us say, hey, we have good days, then we have what, bad days, ain't it? Why is that, brothers and sisters? Let's see what the book say here. Jeremiah 17. Why is it a, a battle? Right between your ears there. It's a battle. It always want to cut you off, ain't it? Every day, every second, every minute. And then you go somewhere and try to mind your own business. Here comes something there to try to distract you or to pull you away. Sometimes, brother, it's best to go home, just sit down and don't do anything. You can't turn the TV on. It's going to distract you. It's going to make you friends. Everywhere you look, it's something there to cause that lust to come in. But why is it a battle, brother and sister? Let's look at Jeremiah 17, verse 9. What does it say? The heart is deceitful above all things. The, the mind, brother and sister, the heart is what? Deceitful above all. All things, go ahead. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? Ain't that something else, brother and sister? Right here, your mind. And it said, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Go ahead. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruits of his doings. So, brother and sister, whatever you do, we all going to be held accountable. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try to reign even to give to every man according to his ways. So, brother and sister, it's a focus for you every day to keep yourself in line with the commandments of God. You got to grow every day, brother and sister, to try to have a spiritual mindset. And you got to have a morale with it. You can't be teaching the word of God and being a fool. You got to be wise, brothers and sisters. Because sometimes, brothers and sisters, you can have all the knowledge in the world to be able to save a man, to get a man baptized, to give him the truth, but your behavior can turn them away. And brothers and sisters, that's going to fall on you. You can't teach the book and then do something else. Because, brother and sister, most of the time, people are going to look at and see what you doing. Especially if you coming with them with the, with the word of God. They want to see if you keeping it. If you ain't keeping it, how you going to teach it? Did you hear me, brother and sister? Simple. But it's telling you here, this hard mind is what? Wicked. Always trying to get you cut off. And then let's go to 1 John chapter 1. Because in this, brother and sister, it says, Desperately wicked, who can know it? We know the Lord searched it all, but then also, brother and sister, you know it. You know if you're wicked or not, ain't it? Come on now. You know that. You know if you're keeping the commandments of God. You know if you loving your brother, your sister. You know that, brother and sister.
1 John 1. And let's look at verse 5. Go ahead, what does it say? This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him it, and in him is no darkness at all. At all, brothers and sisters. So when you look at it, you can't never charge God, brothers and sisters, with anything. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Go ahead, verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Then we read earlier about the flesh and the spirit, they contrary to one another. Brothers and sisters, you can't say you love the Lord. And when you say you love the Lord, you saying that you're going to keep his commandments, ain't you? If you love me, keep my commandments. But if we say that we have fellowship with him and we walking in darkness, we are light and do not the truth. Go ahead, finish, bro. Seven. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Ain't this nice there, brothers and sisters? And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin, brothers and sisters. That's why we have to get up, up under the baptism, get up under the blood of Jesus Christ. Because when you got into that baptism, brothers and sisters, and got in that watery grave, and you went down, and you came back up, your sins were wiped away. But brothers and sisters, but once you get out of that, the Lord tell you have the newness of life, right? Now you can't go back and be dirtier coming into the day of the Lord or judgment than you was when you went in. Brothers and sisters, you got to change. You know, there's so many people, brothers and sisters of Israel, and jumped off in that water and ain't taking their walk serious. And it's painful because they're not understanding spiritually what they're doing. they bringing damnation to themselves, not to nobody else. Because when we did our baptism, brothers and sisters, we made a covenant with God, didn't it? And majority of all has been baptized. You made a covenant with God, and also what? You had witnesses there. Oh, no, you can't lie. You got baptized this day. I was there. So there's no way around it, brothers and sisters, and that was painful about it. Did we finish that? Yes, we did. Let's go to Michael 6. You know, because they don't understand, because as you grow spiritually, brothers and sisters, you begin to know then how serious it is the covenant that you made with God. You know? Because if you never grow spiritually, brothers and sisters, you always will continue struggling fleshly. Michael 6. And let's look at verse 2. Verse 2. Go ahead. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth. For the Lord have a controversy with his people. He got a controversy with who? His people. Go ahead. Who is people? And he will plead with Israel. He will plead with who? Israel. He will plead with Israel. Judgment begin at the house of the Lord, brothers and sisters. Look at verse 8, what it say? He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. That's right, brothers and sisters. He showed us these things here. We understand, brothers and sisters, we're not done. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we want to play dumb. But we understand that just like the Lord was telling that our mind is wicked and who can know it. You know if you're keeping the commandments of God, brothers and sisters. Is it a secret? You know, brothers and sisters, and we have to be accounted for 
Because the Lord is going to deal with us individually. Let's go to Romans 13. Because the Lord telling us was acquired of us, brother and sister. This commandment, brother read it to you today. The duty of man is keeping the commandments of God. It's the whole duty of man. Keeping the commandments of God. Not to be the richest man in the world. Or the most famous person in the world. It just keep the commandments of God. Romans 13. We're going to pick up verse 1 or 2. Look what it say right, right off the bat, brothers and sisters. Verse 1, what it say? Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but in God. But for there is no power but of who? But of God, brothers and sisters. That's spiritually understanding that. It said, let every soul be subject unto the higher power. But there is no power but of God. Go ahead. The powers that be are ordained by God. Go ahead. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power. Listen to this now. Whosoever therefore resisted the power. Go ahead. Resisted the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. That's the lake of fire, brothers and sisters. Is that simple? That don't need to be explained, do it? Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves what? Damnation. Skip down to verse 11. Verse 11. Go ahead, what it say? And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of the sleep. That's right. We sure need to wake up out of sleep. A lot of Israel sleep that's been baptized and got in sleep. Go ahead. For now is our salvation nearer than, we, than when we believed. That's right. Go ahead. 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. That's it, brother. So this, it's time out for games. You made a covenant with God. What are we waiting on? It's simple, brother. So this telling you, let us therefore cast off the works of what? Darkness. The, the God we serve say he's not a God of darkness, right? right. The God of light. And let us put on the armor of light. Verse 13, what does it say? Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. That's right. You can't walk like that. You're trying to uphold the word of God, but then you're walking in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering or wantonness, and not in strife and envy. Who going to listen to you, brother and sister? Because those are things, brother and sister, we got to account for. Because a lot of time when we even go out now, and you tell a person you're a Hebrew Israelite, boy, a lot of them look, don't they? Why? Because you have others that got the knowledge, but their behavior making it bad for us all. We have a spiritual more to carry ourselves, brothers and sisters, as the light of the world. The Lord is telling you how not to be, right? So why people with the knowledge and with the truth is doing that? It don't make sense, brother. So you ain't doing but cutting people off from getting the truth. But that, that's going to fall on you. Simple. What verse we at? 14. Go ahead. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh, to fulfill the lust thereof. Ooh, that's, ooh, that's something, man. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's that armor. Huh? The armor, you put on that armor light. But you put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh 
to fulfill the lust thereof. Brother, so you can't make no provisions. How you make provisions? You sitting there thinking, ain't it? Because that mind, what? It's wicked, ain't it? Didn't it say it's desperately wicked? You can't give no provision, brothers and sisters. You got to stand on the word of God. And people got to know, brothers and sisters, that you stand for the Lord. And when you begin to stand, people ain't going to come to you with foolishness. Or they ain't going to feel that you had serving the Lord, so they feel they can come to you with anything. Brother, you got to nip that in the bud, but brother and sister, the book telling us simple. No provisions, brother and sisters. You can't do it. Now, because that flesh something else. Now let's uh let's go to Romans 13, I mean uh, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians seven. Because when the Lord tells us, brothers and sisters, not to give provisions for that flesh, because we know if you do, the flesh gonna eventually get uh, get you cut off or get you in trouble. But let's look at verse one here. Second Corinthians seven and verse one. What it said, bro? Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let us cleanse ourselves from some filthiness. All, all brothers and sisters, anything that's contrary to the word of God. Ain't no more cherry picking. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. And it's saying perfecting what? Holiness. In the fear of God. To get to that perfection and holiness, if you don't fear God, brothers and sisters, you don't forgive or fear the damnation to understand the lake of fire, you will never perfect yourself. You're going to keep molding along and molding along, thinking you some, but then the book going to be a witness against you. Because to get that perfecting, you got to fear God. When you get ready, to break God's law, you got to ask yourself, is this what God want me to do? And when you say no, that's it. That should be the fear. Don't nobody fear God no more, brothers and sisters. That's what's wrong. There ain't nobody teaching. Everybody got God lovely. You can do, be what you want. Everybody, God still love you. Like they say, love is love. Okay. No understanding, brother and sister, but spiritually you understand about that when they say love is love. Straight to the lake of fire. Let's go to Colossians 3. Like I say, brother and sister, it's time to wake up. It's time out for foolishness. It's time out. Colossians 3, and let's look at verse 23. It's all about having a spiritual mindset, brother. So when you begin to take on that, you'll begin to do this here. And you'll see it this way, brother and sister. Verse 23, what does it say? And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Man, that's your first step, brother and sister, whatever you do. Even when you look at this choir today, how beautiful they were singing, when they had a mindset that they singing and doing it for the Lord, it's going to be perfected. They're going to want perfection. You see what I'm saying? Because you're doing it for the Lord. Now, if you want to hear to get a whole lot of hooping and hollering and cheering for men, the choir going to do things to make the crowd jump up and down. But when you put your mindset and do it for the Lord, brothers and sisters, it's going to be perfection. Serving the Lord, it's going to be perfection. But a lot of times, brothers and sisters, the world and most people want to be loved 
or liked by me. How many likes I got? How many can I get? You know, you see it. Everything out there, brothers and sisters, you got to be almost half naked to advertise and you get all the likes in the world. <laughs> Put a full suit on and a full dress to the ground, cover your head up. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. <laughs> But it's all in the mindset. You know, because I remember one time listening, something on the radio show years ago, it's just like, if you get a full dress now, say it could be $50 for a full dress, but that little mini skirt, it might be $100. The shorter it is, the more it costs. That. You're right, sir, it don't make sense. But that's how the world lives. Now, let's move a little further. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. And this is something we got to take account of right here. 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 33. What it say, bro? Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Don't it? Yeah. Skip down to verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That's right. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye what? Steadfast. Unmovable. Can't nobody knock you off your block. Why? Because always abounding what? In the work of the Lord. That's what you got to do, brothers and sisters, because when you're abounding for the work of the world, anybody can come to you and tempt you to do was satisfactory for the world. You already know what your satisfactory is with the word of God. Keep the commandment. Thou should not come. Thou should not commit adultery. I don't care what nobody come to you at. You're going to go back to the law. That's what you got to do, brothers and sisters. That's the difference in the bonding in the work of the Lord than in the work of the world or for men. Because a lot of times, brothers and sisters, if the world paying you, you got to do what they say. If you want your award here to be seen and glorified, you got to do what they say to get to the top. But brother, so when you understand spiritually that the things that you're doing now, your reward is later. And what's greater gift that you can get than eternal life? We got to keep that in the forefront, brothers and sisters, of why we're doing what we're doing. When you look around in Israel, some of them don't even think about their internal life because you see it. You know a person who's serving the Lord and he's steadfast because steadfast brings on consistency. When you're serving God, brother and sister, you got to have consistency. You can't just wait till the Sabbath day to open up your Bible. It got to be opened up, brother and sister, on a daily basis. Let's go to 1 John 2. 1 John 2. Cause, because sometimes, brother and sister, you look at the battle now, it's like People say, like, well, it's evil versus good. But what it is, brother and sister, is serving the Lord or serving the world. Who you want to be liked by the most? The world, which is represented by people, or your God? That's what it comes down to. But let's look at 1 John 2 here and look at verse 15. Straight to the point, what it say? 
Love not the world. Love what? Not the world. Go ahead. Neither the things that are in the world. That's right. Go ahead. For if man, any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's right, because sometimes if any man love the world and the things of the world, a lot of times that thing's going to cause you to break the commandments to achieve them. Simple. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Ain't this what the world moving on? The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. All those things that's advertised to us. The lust of the flesh, men and women, and the lust of the eyes, you begin to what? Be tempted in the pride of life. I want to live like that. So what, can, what do I have to do to achieve that lifestyle? And it say, and it's not of the Father, but is what? Of the world. Verse 17, what does it say? And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God abideth forever. Man, ain't this hope? Ain't this encouraging? When you get spiritually minded, it said the world passes away in the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. That's when you begin, brothers and sisters, to separate flesh and spiritual. Putting your spiritual mind on because you're looking at the end game. Most people is focused on the game. It's a difference, brothers and sisters. What verse we at, bro? That was the end of that was 17? The yep. Yeah, okay. Now, let's look at Romans 12. Because what we're finna read here, brothers and sisters, most people don't want to do. You know, they want to say they know the Lord. That's why, brothers and sisters, you look around every year. Like when Passover come on, boy, it be pack, 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 done. Why it ain't like that now? Mm -hmm. Lord, give us 52 Sabbaths in a year. How many are we really keeping? It's, it's simple, but it's small, brother. So it's just like tithing, 10%. 10% over a dollar, what? 10 cent, ain't it? And you got 90. Well, you got 365 days a year. Lord, I just want 52. Simple, ain't it? But look at this here. We're in Romans 12. Because this is what a lot of us don't want to do on a consistent basis here. Verse 1, Romans 12 and verse 1, what does it say? I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. That's right. That's what we don't want to do, brother and sir. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. And go ahead. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Ain't that reasonable? But we don't think it's reasonable. Because we don't want to do the things, brothers and sisters, to be acceptable unto God. We want to do the things that make us acceptable to the world. That's, that's what's driving us. See, that's the flesh. We got to begin to put our spiritual mindset on. That you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is, what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. Ain't that something? Just a renewing of your mind, brother. So when we got in that baptism, it's just a renewing of the mind. That old person that went down in that water. And when you go in that water and come up, it's supposed to be a renewing of your mind. 
And we got to begin to let this world go. You see what I'm saying? You know, even during COVID, you know, people say, hey, I can't come to church because of COVID. But then, hey, they on social media in club without no mask on. Come on now. But you made provisions for the world. But you don't make those provisions and sacrifice to come serve your God. There's food for thought on that, brothers and sisters. Let's go to verse 3. What does it say? For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. That's right, brother. So we can't put ourselves no higher than nobody else. We all trying to get eternal life. If you're strong in, in something in the word and your brother, sister, we encourage them. Pray for them. That's why it's, it's important, brother, sister, to have this holy convocation to uplift and, and be edified for one another. That's what it's about. Everything the Lord provides for us, brother, and sister, is for our benefit. It's just like the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day was made for man so he can refresh his mind, his body, fellowship. Get one day out the world to focus on him. Let's give him that attention that day. Having that holy convocation. That's the importance of it, brothers and sisters. It's for us. Because you need that. Because we all in this, we say what? The, uh, the grind. I mean, this rat race. But this one day, that rat ain't got the race. Well, some of us, brothers and sisters, we so ingrained in the things of the world, we're going to keep grinding, 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 and grinding. It got to come in sometime, brothers and sisters, spiritually to understand that the things that God has given us and put in place is for us. And we don't accept it. Now, let's move to 1 Corinthians 3. 